Hey guys, welcome to the Skolo Online YouTube channel, the channel that is all about learning. Today we're going to do video number three in our tutorial series where we are showing you how to create your own AI content generator tool with OpenAI Python Django and a digital ocean. So today we're doing part three of this video. So if you're catching up with us now, have a look at our channel and have a look at our videos. And there is two more videos you still have to see before you get to this one okay so you can just navigate to um our scholar online channel and under our scholar online channel you look at playlists you will see one of the last playlists we did was this one over here and the playlist currently has two videos and this one is going to be the third one okay so watch that first video and the second one before you watch this one so you can figure out where we are in the series okay and also if i say to you i'm going to link something in the description below make sure you go to the bottom of the video and you click that show more button and you're going to find all the links that I will link below and I will also have our video timestamps because our videos tend to be quite long so I will try and put timestamps as much as possible to different parts of what I'm teaching so you can just use those timestamps to jump ahead to a certain part of the video you don't have to watch the entire video step by step. If I'm doing something that you already know about, you can just jump over to the part of the video that you want to watch. Okay. And definitely catch on, catch up with us on our social media. I've got our social media links as well in the description below. All right. And remember very, very important. Please, 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 please like this video and leave a comment for us because it really helps us with the YouTube algorithm. The more you interact with the video, the more you sort of you know, comment, like, you know, our videos get featured and then more people can get access to this amazing content that we are producing on this channel. And let's uh, get learning. So um, we've got this link. Um, I will put in the description below, but we've got this note that we're keeping. Um, and every time we do something, we're going to take it off the note so we can see what we still have to do and what is still coming and what we've already done. So this is the third video. By now, you've already created your development environment where you're going to be building from. And we've decided to build off a digital ocean a droplet, which is like a virtual private server that's sitting on digital ocean. So that is on the first video, what we did there. All right. After we set up our virtual environment, we're able to create a blank Django application. And then in the next video that we did last week, we actually like worked around a template. So we went and found two templates we're going to be working for. In fact, we downloaded a hundred templates or so, and we're going to get about two templates from those a hundred templates. So we've got a template that's going to cover the landing page and we've got a template that's going to cover the back admin page of this website. So. Um, when we left off last week, we had um, already adjusted our Django application to serve our template. But as you can see, it's just a lot of jargon and a lot of, you know, you know, basic, you know, whatever came with the, with the blank template, which we're going to get rid of today. And we're going to build our own working template. Okay. I mean, our own sort of like a learning copy, website copy. So that's what we're going to start with today. And then after we've done that, we're going to create our authorization authentication flow, which is like the login registration page. So if you look at our notes, this is where we are, right? So this week, we're going to cover this, uh, creating a landing page content and illustrations, and we're going to try and cover authentication flow. And we'll see how far we get with this. If we get a little bit further, we can continue. You know, I don't want to go over two hours, but, you know, we'll see how far we get with what we're going to do today. Again, as a reminder, these videos are long, and I'm trying to cover everything step by step to cover everybody from, you know, starters, beginners, so that they don't miss anything all the way to people who know a little bit about Django. So there might be some sections that I go through and you think, oh, I know this or I've done that. And this is a bit boring, right? So feel free to jump over and skip over because I will put in the uh, description below timestamps of all the sections in the video, right? So you don't have to watch if you feel like I'm going a little bit too slow or I'm over explaining certain things, just skip the video and get to the part that you want to watch um, and so forth, right? So this is now where we're going to start off. So the first thing is we're going to create content for our website. Um, there's many ways you can do this. If you like in a big company, you could like get a content writer to do it for you. But remember, this is what we're doing. We're building an AI content writer. So we're going to use it, um, use this engine to actually help, um, get some content for our website. So I've opened, um, 
the playground if you want to know how to get here i will put this link in the description below but if you want to get here uh, by yourself you just go to openai.com this is the engine that we're going to be using so let's test it out a little bit and see what it's what it can produce for us so go over there go to api and when you go to api you can get click get started to create your own account or you can log in if you already have an account so i've already logged in and once you log in, then you're going to look for playground. Okay. It's going to be a link at the top over there. Once you've logged in and then you just click on it and it takes you to the playground. Otherwise I will also link it in the description below, but you will need to have logged in and created an account. And when you get started with open AI for, I think the first month or so, you know, you get up to like $18 worth of credit for free, which is a lot. Okay. So open AI is not free. You have to pay for the AI calls, but I'm telling you, it's really cheap and quite affordable and you can afford to pay for this and then resell whatever the services you're going to produce to somebody else who's going to pay a little bit more. Right? So let's go. So what we're going to do here is we want to create, um, landing page copy. All right. So I'm going to say, create a, um, you know, a, a, an, an impact and, and I mean, create a, a powerful, create a powerful landing page, um, create a powerful landing page copy for the following product. Okay. Let's see what it will do. Okay. So the product that we want to do is, um, you know, website for the following website, let's say for the following website and the website, our uh, name is Carabo AI. All right. Then I'm going to say, um, the description is a Carabo AI is an online, uh, AI content generator website. Okay. So let's try that and let's um, make this a little bit more. Let's give it like 500. Let's take the temperature down to not point up to not point eight. Let's give it a little bit more credit and then let's submit that. Hmm, not quite what I'm looking for. Let's see if you use a different engine, All right? Text query. Let's try that. Uh -huh. I like this. Carabao is a perfect website for people looking for generate online content with our easy to use tools. You can create powerful articles, blogs, videos with little or no effort. If the platform makes it easy, content easy in our team, the editors, da, 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 and quality. Okay. I like this. Um, I could edit a little bit around the blogs and whatever. So let's put this here you know so meet carabo okay so let's say this is meet carabo and then your ai content generator is finally here so maybe instead of saying our our content generator is finally here you can say carabo AI is a perfect website you know look at generate online content with our easy to use tools you can create it okay so let's let's use that for this section so i'm going to go to the index if you recall how we did this so over here i'm going to replace this content with that all right, with no effort. So you can use um, create powerful articles, uh, blogs, and marketing content. Okay, with little with little to no effort. Okay, um, watch a video. I don't know. Um, maybe let's just say here get started, and perhaps this will take us to. Um, you know, our registration, or our pricing page. All right. Let me see this div over here. I want to remove this play thingy so that it just says get started and then somebody can, can continue. Okay. So we worked around here a little bit. We'll get back to the illustration there. Let's pick our three most important use cases that we're going to use. All right. So you'll see over here, if we go down, you see now this part where that talks about SEO consultancy content marketing keyword research so these are the three main let's find the three main use cases i think that our website will do so if i'm thinking from the top of my head um blog writing that's 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 one of the most important use cases people actually use this AI content for so let's start with that and and let's say uh blog uh blog assistance okay blog writing assistance 
All right. And then let's, let's pick another one. Um, uh, marketing, uh, marketing is another one and marketing can have a lot of things, you know, cold email marketing, you know, marketing copies for websites. Da, 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 da. So marketing can be a broader field that you can have a couple of use cases under marketing and a blog writer can also have a couple of use cases, generating blog topics, generating blog sections, generating blog, you know, uh, beginning blog, middle blog, end, you know, rewriting certain things. So blog, so blog writing can be a whole section, right? Content marketing can be a whole section. What else can we think about? Um, what else can this be? Can, can this, I, I think another like third, third important use case that that's quite important. Um, content, um, social media. How about that? Yeah. Social media. Okay. Social media. This is like generate tweets, generate, you know, Facebook posts, you know, answer Quora questions, you know, stuff like that. So let's say social media, um, help, you know, because we don't want it to like manage our social media, but we want to get like, you know, get ideas. If you like have a lot of, you know, like you, you need to tweet a lot or you know, get some ideas around tweets or something like that. So let's say that social media help, right? Then we're going to get our content writer to generate some content for us here. All right. Let's see how long this is. This is like about one sentence. Okay. So let's go back here and say, all right, create powerful. Okay. So this is, this was not a good instruction, by the way. You can get as much out of AI copywriting as you put in, right? So if you don't give it a good instructions, it gives you crap results. Okay. So you have to think around really how you want to rewrite, how you want to, you know, sort of like instruct this, um, you know, uh, AI engine to give you sort of the best, you know, the, the best output. So what I want it to give me now is a little bit of a description around AI blog writing, right? So let's, um, create product description. Okay. Um, the product is, um, um, Garabo AI, um, blog writing assistant, Garabo AI online blog writing assistant, right? Let's see what it will give me there. Okay. So let me not use Carabo. Let's just say um, blog writing assistant, AI, AI powered blog writing assistant. Okay. So it doesn't, yeah. So let's, let's try that one. There you go. This is really great, but I think I need a shorter, if I look over here, I need like just, I need a shorter sentence. This is quite long, right? So how do we, we can actually do something else, right? We can create, I'm going to like, um, open a new window so that I don't close that one. Right. And then I'm going to say in this specific window, I'm going to take what, what was given to me here because this is quite a bit long. Right, and then I'm gonna say summarize. <laughs> summarize the following paragraph. Paragraph, okay. And it starts there and it ends there. Right, let's see. Ah, it's not really summarizing much. Um, the paragraph is about a long. No, 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 no. The assistant helps. Okay, no, this is not what I want. Rewrite. Um, rewrite a rewrite the following paragraph in one sentence. Okay, let's try that. Rewrite the following paragraph in one sentence. Let's test the powers and the limits of this AI writer. But let's let's use a different engine. Perhaps we'll get better results. Okay, I just want to really like make this short as possible. Uh huh. There you go. It took out a lot of what I wanted to say, but it's better because I really wanted a shorter version of this. Okay, so we're going to remove the blog writing assistant, 
and we're going to paste this okay air power block writing assistant automatically generates blog posts based on your specific needs so you can write more without taking up extra time okay perfect perfection so let's do the same thing here for the next part is the AI blog writing assistant. The next part is um, uh, uh, marketing uh, content. Let me say uh, AI marketing content creation, right? Create, yeah, AI marketing content creation. Huh. So let's take that and put it in here into the summary okay and close that and try summarizing that into one sentence mm. i don't know i think it removes a lot of the meaning but it doesn't matter all right so this paragraph is a bit shorter than that i really want them to be the same um the same length but it's fine ai uh, social media content creation is the last one all right submit there okay so let's copy that and summarize it over here and let's see what we get there all right so the content marketing is there and then the social media stuff is there right so this is like about the same length over there so this one really is way too short the way i see it um um so i'm gonna put here Carabo ai to shorten this a little bit and then this is almost the same length as that one provides users with to create a quality engaging interesting content for their social media accounts okay um garabo ai blog writing assistant so this is about the same you know about the same length here all right this 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 but this is this this actually we need a little bit more so let's go back here and redo the ai um ai marketing marketing content content creation assistant okay let's try this again because i think i need a sentence that's a bit longer than that so let's take that paste it in here submit that yeah so what you can always do is if you don't get the results you want you know try it again because what i really want is this to be about similar lengths okay so this and this is about the same length and this is a bit shorter the reason why i want it to be pretty much a similar length if you look at your website so this is comes from years and years of experience you can see this is about three lines, three lines. If this ends up being longer, this button will be a little bit too low, you know. So that's already what I'm, I'm thinking ahead. So uh, automatically generate. So how can we make this? Let me remove it automatically. There you go. Then it's about the same, the same length for both. All right. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So let's save this and let's push it to our server. Okay, save the content. All right. <laughs> All right, so if we restart this server now, let's restart it and let's check what it kind of what we currently now have. Um there you go, you see. So it's about the same, you know, length each and then the buttons are aligned. That's why I wanted, when you create this content, obviously I wanted it to be, you know, as, you know, the same length, you know, because I wanted, you know, everything to sort of align over here. I'm going to work on changing the, these um, icons. All right. And if you want to change these icons, you can see at the top of the, all right. 
um, here over here where it says learning services to SVG. All right. This is the icon over there. That's the icon over here. So we can go and search for our own icons and then we can change these icons and put the icons that we like. Obviously, we don't want an icon that says SEO. That's the first thing. Um, but you can see over here, meet Carabo, get started, you know, um, this is cool. Or we can just replace this with a different looking button. So this read more button, let's see. Um, all right. So this um, services.html over here, because there is no services.html, let's replace all of that. We'll add the links later, okay? But I like this button over here, button primary. So I'm going to replace at the top here, this get started with button primary. So I think I just need to sort of um, remove this BTN split at the end, you see? All right. So, and then say get started. All right, then it's pretty much the same button over there, right? All right, so we're cleaning up our website to make it look more realistic. And so I've sort of demonstrated to you how to get content for this, all right? So I've shown you how to get this content. I've showed you how to get that content, all right? What we're going to do is that we're going to rewrite this as well. But to save you time, I'm not going to do it in front of you. I'm going to sort of pause this and let you go do it yourself as well and come back. And then we'll continue from there. And then I'm going to remove this. How to SEO can help you. So this whole section, I don't, I don't, I don't really think we need this. All right. So let's find this whole section over here. Um, blah, blah. This whole, you know, this whole page section here. Ugh, what is happening here? This whole section that starts there. Um, just, just, I don't really need this section. And I also don't need this whole section. Check your website SEO. So all of this, check your website SEO. So both of this, we're going to remove, all right? Or perhaps what we can do, we can leave this check your website SEO and leave and, and like have people and use this to collect email addresses, you know, and like, you know, it can be a button that we just collect email addresses from, right? So let's leave that. And um, instead of calling, saying uh, check website SEO, we could say, um, you know, join our 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 carabo mailing list for fresh content ideas weekly something like that all right and then we can um sort of you know example you know what is your email address john doe at gmail.com and we'll comp we'll fill in we'll build this form later but um suppose you know um, yeah, we can leave that one instead of check now this button, we can just say, um, you know, join mailing list. Um, as a website is always a loss opportunity. If you do not give your users the opportunity to join your mailing list, to be informed about the things that you're doing. Cause you know, I find that even if you put this thing here, just because you've put it here, people are actually going to fill it in. But if you never put it in, you'll never know. So even if you collect what two email addresses a month, that's something, okay. You can start to build your mailing list and start marketing to people, showing them new products and you can rewrite this. All right. So actually let's get the AI to write us a nice, you know, a nice short, um, uh, a write a short, you know, um, you know, what do you call it? A short, um, call to action for users browsing, browsing a website to join our mailing list. Okay. Let's see if it will create something way more attractive. Aha. Uh -huh. You see? Sign up for our mailing list to stay up to date with news and events. That that sounds way better than the way I wrote it. So use the AI copywriter, okay? Use it, use it. It's there to be used by you, and that's exactly what we're building. So I've done that. So I'm gonna just remove this other section at the top. All right. Um, let's see this container and and section. So both of these must go. All right. This both of these. Um. Where am I now? Where am I? Yeah, so both of these. All right. Um, so let's find all the dot HTMLs because I need to replace all of these. Um, let's find them all. All these dot HTMLs, view more, you know, let's just replace them all with these hashtags. Okay, that's fine. Let's replace that one. 
all right and then we're only left with that okay so we've deleted this section we've kept that one the pricing plan we're going to keep and then we're going to rewrite this as well we're going to keep the block section and we're going to leave this at the bottom we will update this a little bit later so what i want to do now is let's look a little bit about the pricing okay um we don't have to finalize everything now but let's at least rewrite it in a way that makes a little bit more sense we can always change it later so the way we're going to do the pricing for our product is we're going to pay people for a um i mean we're going to charge people for a subscription a monthly subscription right and within that monthly subscription they're going to get a certain amount of you know benefits you know so um the way most of these ai content writers are, are created and the way they are structured if you look at this one for example let me reopen it in a different page writer okay if you look at writer for example and you look at their pricing page um a lot of their pricing is based on characters that you get you know so they've got a free plan and then they've got some plans you pay for and then they're charging nine dollars a month and up to twenty nine dollars a month for the unlimited plan where you get unlimited characters and trust me even if you give people unlimited characters people don't actually use unlimited characters so you know this is a good uh, way to make money twenty nine dollars a month is quite a bit and you're never gonna you know use all of this uh credits with open ai anyway right so what we're going to do here is we're going to try and create a pricing plan that looks very similar to this one. Okay. And because you're getting into a market that is getting highly competitive very quickly, you also don't want to overprice. You don't want to charge more than the competition is charging. You want to be reasonably priced without being overly priced. Okay. So Jarvis charges up to $99, I think a month, right? So writer is very, very affordable compared to things like Jarvis. Okay. So they sort of entered the market at a very cheap place and, you know, and they're getting a lot of, uh, uh, you know making a lot of money that way and java is at a higher higher level um and java still gets users and it has a different marketing strategy so you have to decide for your business where do you want to enter do you want to enter at a cheap level at a higher level and then you know sort of like you, you know use better marketing tactics to 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 get your to get your clients that's really up to you okay but for my website i'm gonna i'm gonna try and be, you know sort of price myself closer to writer you know than java so i'm gonna go free maybe ten dollars and you know and i'm gonna keep this maybe also at 29 dollars. all right so i'm gonna try and maybe do the same so let's go over here and say um where's our website now Karawa, do, oh, I, i'm gonna keep, keep this the free version all right so let's let's find where this is on on our content all right let's find where this is choose the right plan for you all right, I'm going to keep that pricing plan to the right plan for you. I'm going to leave that as it is. And then we're going to start with the uh, the basic one. So the basic one, I'm going to call this the free version. All right. And the free version is just going to be zero. All right. So where it says 39, I'm just going to put zero and zero, zero. Okay. All right. And then this is going to be free monthly. Okay. And then what is our, what, what are we giving people for free all right so you have to decide um you know um just just how much do we um do wanna do wanna give people over here so this is p these are paragraphs let's see this is a paragraph and then this is with a span of something okay so let's just work with paragraphs for now all right so the first thing i'm gonna say is jarvis is giving like five thousand words for free all right but i'm gonna i'm gonna be less uh i'm gonna be more stingier than them okay so i'm gonna be like three thousand words three thousand three thousand characters okay uh per month all right so maybe that's where that's where the suffix will come in all right three thousand characters um three thousand characters per month per month all right for free so what we want to do here is we this is what is called a freemium model okay um there, so there's many types of pricing strategies a freemium model type type of uh, pricing strategy is where you you want your people to pay but a lot of people are not willing to pay for something they haven't tried out yet all right so there, there so there's two ways to incise to incite people you could either have what we call a um you know like the free trial model where um you allow people to to trial you know all your 
your, your, your capabilities on your website, but you give them like a limited period and you say, you can try this out for a month, for two weeks, whatever. And then people can decide if they like something or not. And then within a month, then, you know, their trial period is over and then you start charging them for the services. The second type of pricing model is where you say, you know what, I'm just going to limit, you can have this, you can have access for life, but I'm going to limit how much I give you, you know? So I'm going to give you like, I don't know, 5,000 words that you can use for free every month. You can use it for free and you don't have to pay. And at, at the point where you feel like you need more, which means you're not, you're generating more stuff, then you can start paying us for the extra stuff, you know? So both models work and, you, and really whichever one you want to use depend on the type of website that you're doing. So something like this, where you're actually selling content and you're selling words it works it, it, it makes much more sense to work with a freemium model where there is a free version where people can actually like get only like a few words or few characters to test out everything that you're doing and then they will get hooked and hopefully they will pay to get more words that is this would this would work perfectly for our use case the kind of use case that would have a you know free trial is a use case where you can't really like limit words you know for example like my website here um which is a, a business management software right i can't sell a business management software and sell you you know only like one calendar meeting a month and one note a month and you know one hr character a month or whatever you know it makes no sense for you to really try out my software you've got to try out all the capabilities of it right so it's better for me to then say okay fine i'll give you all the capabilities of the software but i only give it to you for free for 14 days so you get a 14 day free trial in that 14 days you can do whatever it is that you like but then after the 14 days if you didn't like it then you know thank you very much bye bye but if you liked it then you have to start paying you understand so this is how you think about your pricing model so in our specific case we will definitely be going for the freemium model the next thing that you want to consider and you want to consider this very very carefully is you can once you give somebody free access you can always say enter your credit card record uh, details and then after the first you know what after you you go over your free you know, whether it's a 14 day free trial or whatever, then we automatically charge you for the billing, you know, for the next, you know, whatever. And people tend to forget the credit card that they've entered it and then they will sign up for it and they'll put in their credit cards and then they will, you know, uh, then you, you, can, you continue to charge them after the free trial. That's a bit risky because some people will just not try out your product that way because nobody people are very wary about putting in their credit card details so you need to use that with a bit of care right and it works better for um for, for for models which have a free trial where you can like give a free trial and you can say everything is available for free um but uh, for one month and then you know but for you to sign up for the free trial you have to give up your credit card but don't worry we're not going to charge you for it we're not going to charge you we are going to charge you only after the one month and you can cancel anytime you tell them that but you know they're going to forget and then after a month you start charging them all right so those are the kind of things you can consider at this stage but it's a risky one and i would only use that credit card uh, you know you prompt people to do that if i know that i'm selling a product that's number one unique that number two, I know people will want it bad enough that they will enter the credit card records. If you're selling something like this, which has so much competition, there are so many AI copywriting tools popping up out there that um, if you put a credit card requirement at the beginning, probably no one is going to sign up for your service. So I'm going to scrap that. I will not require people to enter the credit card details. I will just, you know. Um, allow them to sign up for free in this ver in this sense and then take it from there right so under subscribe here where it says subscribe i'm going to um yeah actually let's leave it as subscribe you know um or or you know start for free okay start for free and then the other ones will be subscribe all right so so this is three thousand characters all right what else you want to put in here I'm copying a little bit from what writer has in there, but I'm going to say, you know, all um, use cases are available for this, you know, so you can use any use case that you want, but you're limited to the 3000 characters a month. You can say, you know, 30 plus languages, um, languages. So you can create content in like different languages. You can create content in um, all voice tones. All right. And then what else do you want to do? Okay, so let's just, just do it that way, right? So I'm going to copy the same thing here. And I'm going to paste it on the standard one. But the standard one, I think I'm going to charge um, 
let's charge $9.99. Let's charge exactly what writer is charging. All right. And you can change this pricing. This is really up to you. And for this one, I'm going to give it, um, you know, how many characters? 50K. Let's give it like 40K. Okay. 40,000 um, characters per month. And then do all of that. And then they can subscribe over there. And then, so this, this second one is going to be called, let's call this um, starter. What did we call this? The first one, we called it a uh, free version. Let's call this a uh, starter um, writer. All right. And then the last one is um, advanced, advanced writer. And then if you're an advanced writer, we're charging you not $99. We're going to charge you 20, $29 a month. And you're going to paste everything in there as well. And, um, and then this will be unlimited. All right. So here you can use as many, as many characters as you like. And then you're going to say, okay, fine. I'm charging everything. Right. is charging. Why are people going to use my products better? You know, like if you're going to create an AI copywriting tool today, you're going to really have to find a way to differentiate yourself from the competition, especially because, um, you know, people are not going to pay more or try a new product if it's just the same as what's existing, right? So you're gonna we're gonna think about that a little bit later, and I think we're gonna get that in our use cases. We're gonna find use cases that are a bit different and unique that make us stand out, so that people will use our product uh, better than the other ones. Maybe we'll put in some coding as well, some codecs later on, and we'll think around that, and then we'll, that will help us differentiate ourselves from the competition, right? So this is the pricing I'm gonna go with. All right. So after I've gone with that, we'll check, we'll update this content over here. And I think we're good, right? So this page that said about Karaba, when I've decided to change this page and I've decided to call it. Um, so here where it says about Karabo. All right. I'm going to change this to pricing. Okay. Because this is very important to see pricing at the beginning. All right. I'm going to change this to the pricing page and I'm going to change the URL as well to say pricing which means I have to change my urls.py. So this about, I'm gonna change it to say pricing. And um, I'm gonna change this as well to say pricing. All right, so I'm gonna change that and let's change it in the views, in our views. All right, so here where it says about, let's change that to pricing. And I'm gonna change even the HTML to say pricing, okay? Which means that this about, um, where is it? Dish, dish, dish. So let me close this about page. Um, let's go into the, 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 the templates and um, landing. And then here where it says about, let's just rename that to pricing. Okay. So that's good. And then we can open up pricing. And then um, once, we, because we've changed it to pricing. So um, we're going to from home. Okay, so this home, remember this is URL for home. So we can rewrite this URL for home. And then over here we can say pricing. And then we can just say our pricing. Plans. And then you can see um, what's over there. There's, um, we can just delete this whole section, this section. So here, this, this whole page section we can delete. Right, why is this header different color? Oh, div container, let's remove that, and then that's the pricing section. So we can actually just like copy and paste that whole section that we have on the other side, you know. So this whole page section we can actually remove, right? And you can copy that whole pricing from the other side and paste it here. So we've got already we've done the pricing over here this whole page section, you see this whole subscribe, everything. So you can just copy this. You can copy all of that. Okay. And put it inside of the pricing page. All right. So let's see what we've got now. All right. So we've got, um, let's restart this. Okay. We've restarted that. Let's, um, restart our website as well. You see now this is different now. Um, we've changed that to pricing and, um, let's look at our pricing page. So it starts at zero, which is starting. You can start for free over there and you can get 40,000 characters per month. 
and you pay nine dollars for that for the starter writer package which is obviously we are attracting people to this so we're like hey guys this is the one you should pay for and nine dollars is cheap and i think maybe you'll get lots of people that will be willing to part with nine dollars per month and then they can click here subscribe or otherwise you charge them three times that and they get unlimited characters and all voice tones and everything and if you click on the pricing page you get the pricing plan and it looks exactly the same as what we had before, right? So what I'm going to do now, um, this pricing, let's change this about Carabo AI. So this URL here, we don't want to say about Carabo AI. I want to say um, Carabo AI pricing, all right? So that's better, I think. We'll push this later, doesn't matter. So what I want to show you now, right, is these illustrations, right? Because I, I, I know we still have to fix this content, but I'm going to let you do it in your own time, okay? So let's fix these illustrations to make them look better. And for that, I'm going to use a product which I've told you about before on this uh, channel. And um, if you're going to be a serious web developer, you're going to have to part with $14 a month and get yourself an Envato Elements account, okay? So just Google Envato Elements and Envato Elements is like an online sort of repository website that has a lot of website content that you're going to use. It has everything from website templates. All right. So even like the kind of templates that we used to build this, this, you could have gotten it from Envato Elements um, if you had the Envato Elements account. And we managed to escape paying for all of that. But when it comes to um you know um you know um illustrations and pictures and all of that unfortunately there's nothing there's no one else that provides it cheaper and i like to use Envato because then you still have all these other things you got photos fonts web templates wordpress templates video templates stock video graphics you got all sorts of things you know but um we are going to be using it for graphics specifically so click on if you don't have an account just go over there and create an account they charge like 14 dollars per month or something like that it's a very very affordable thing and if you're going to be doing web development well you know you're going to need something like this or else if you don't want to pay for this you could search for free illustrations because we're going to be using illustrations all right illustrations online all right so let's do that and there is a website i use andro okay you can use andro and you can like browse through andro and you can download some of these this you know what i like about this as well is that you can use your color so let's say we've picked our color to be this and you can like you know get what this color is and then you can like change this color to match that exactly you can even put a hex um you know color they if you don't know what this color is exactly there are many ways to find um what this color is exactly you can um you can um download one of those um get started there that's a big t let's let me fix that you can um get like a, a browser extension that you can use to pick a color from a page and you can get the exact um hex color for this and then you can put it in there and then you can browse through the illustrations but these are very boring illustrations and everybody's using them okay and pff, i'm not going to use that but i'm just in case you wanted a free illustration and you don't want to pay for Envato Elements, you can come over here and you can browse through illustrations here. But I'm going to pay for Envato Elements because I want killer illustrations. This is a website that I want to stand out from the competition. Okay, so I'm going to search over here for, I want specifically 3D illustrations. All right. Um, 3D il uh, marketing illustrations, 3D marketing in graphics. Yeah, let's, let's do that. And I want stuff like this. Oh, I love that. I love that. I love that. All right. Let's see. So we are an AI content generator, right? 3D. Let's try and see. 3D um, AI. Artificial intelligence. Let's see what we get with that. Okay. You don't get a lot of 3D AI, but you do, you do get a lot of 3D marketing. Okay, because I'm looking for this type of illustrations, this marketing stuff, you know, these, these, these nice things. So let me click on that one over there and see what you see that I want illustrations like this, you know, because I want it to be like the theme of my website or I said, let's see if there's anything similar. So when you look at your website here, you'll see I need an illustration for this part. I need another one for here. 
I need another one for there and 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 so that's three right and then this this there was one on the pricing page which i don't need i've taken i've gotten rid of so on my home page i actually need one two i need three so at the very least i need three illustrations that are look that similar that look similar or at least of a similar design that will blend in together all right so if i decide to work with something like this i should be able to find three similar ones like that to work with to continue with you know i like this for the home page all right for the for the landing one you know to use but um one of the things with with landing pages is you might want to over here when you come there to put in like a screenshot of your actual website you know uh, but for now i think i'll work with this and then later on once we've built the admin and we've got some screenshots i can come back and maybe like replace it with a screenshot okay and also before you do anything just double check the type of file that it is you want something that has a png in here all right this doesn't have png but i'm gonna download it anyway because i like it and i'm gonna find a way to use it so i'm gonna call this a carabo okay i do have carabo ai in there so i'm gonna download this for carabo um let's go back and look at other ones because you at this stage you want to find something that is like png that you can work with all right so let's look at that this is nice actually um let's look at that 3d illustration that looks really cool and what i like about that is that they do have similar illustrations to it you know so if you downloaded this you could find you could see like these similar ones you see and this looks like a marketing you know ai content builder doesn't it though you know so let's let's open this one realistic web page dashboard let's look at that this looks really nice i like this with the pink of course you would take out and i like the okay it's also ai eps all right all right so i need three illustrations so i'll use i'll use this one i'll use that one the second one let's find the third one yeah let's take this one all right and this one you can also get it in ai okay perfect perfection so i've got this illustration there i've got that illustration there and i've got this one all right so let's download let's download them so let's start with that one carabo ai all right, so let's busy downloading in a zip file. Let's download that as well. And by the way, this only works if you have an Invado subscription. So if you don't have, you might be skipping this section and maybe work with something like Andro, but it will work exactly the same. So if you decided, okay, you don't want to pay for Invado and you want to work with something like Andro, I mean, you could like click, first of all, change the colors to suit the colors you want. So you can change this color here. Let's say you change it to like red or something. You will see all the illustrations change color. And then you can even search, you know, but you can just like scroll down because it will keep scrolling until you find something you really like. Okay, so let's say you came across, I don't know, um, dish, dish, you came across, and I've used Andro before, you know, these illustrations are not so bad if you find the right one, right? So let's say you came across that, for example, you said you want to use this, you can just download the SVG or you can download PNG. SVG works really, really works better because um you know it resizes and it uses a, you know so you'll get this the smallest version for your site which loads quickly and whatever so you can just say download svg and it's free to download you, you know and, and you can just download and then when you and then you upload it in your images and then you replace the image with that okay so i'm going to show you now how to do that with this one and then you will do the exact same thing with with the Android one if you decided not to pay for this okay so i've downloaded all the three uh, things i'm gonna go um, into my download folder and then i'm going to open my download folder there and then i'm going to let me open the first one all right and so if you have um decided to go the invado elements route okay so if you've decided to go and get the subscription and like take my advice to the team You'll see a lot of the formats of the documents are in like, you know, editable, editable graphic format. Okay. Which means you can't just edit this file in any software that you want. Okay. So let's see what's available inside the thing. Once we open it up, you'll see they've got, and they show you the files they've got, they've got a JPG an EPS and a PDF. All right. So if you opened up the JPG, all right, you could technically use this as it is. You see how it is like you could 
just like you know resize this and use this as a jpg which would work fine because if you looked at your website there let's have a look at our site there you could basically just use it as you want as you like as it is there so i'll just show you how you would do that all right so um i like to like okay let's open it up as jpg let's look at the size so every time you upload an image online okay there's a lot to remember guys there's a lot this is why you might want to just hire someone to do these kind of things for you but there's a lot to remember every time you upload an image online you always have to make sure the size the dimensions of the image number one fit your available space but number two the size you always want to get it to less than 100 kilobytes every time because it affects your page loading speed and you don't want to take like let's look at the size this of this image now this image is 1.3 megabytes in size you don't want to put a 1.3 megabyte image on your website all right it's not necessary because the browser still has to resize it anyway and it's inefficient and google is going to punish you for it with the search engine you know it's going to like list you very low because of that right and your page takes long to load and it irritates people people then will just use another service okay so you want to get this 1.3 megabytes to less than 100 kilobytes okay so how do you do that? The first way is you just resize the size, the width here. This is 50. You can just make this smaller. So you can just like size it down. So you can go to 50 and you can say, okay, fine. Let's, let me size it to, to 10, which will be 20% of what it was before. It just becomes a smaller image. All right. And then you can have a look at it again. Um, it still looks okay. You can't even tell the difference, right? But if you look at the size, you'll see the size is now 120 kilobytes. And that's okay 120 kilobytes is okay because you can still compress it even more all right so i can resize this even more to eight you know if i like all right and then that's even more and then there is a tool that i use and you can like download this online and it's called image optim all right um this image optim is um uh, it's, it's a tool you can download and you can use it and it works only on mac by the way so if you're windows you're gonna have to download something similar for windows but what it is it's like it's an image compression tool it helps you to compress your images to a smaller size so after you've downloaded the image i mean after you have you know sort of like resized it to as small as you can you're still gonna wanna compress it so if you don't want to use something like image optim you could just search for image compression sometimes you can even do it online okay like you have pdf compression or whatever image compressor there it is you can go over here and you can like uh, upload your drop your file over here and it will compress it for you all right so you can like upload a file and you can like upload that file all right or you can you know do what we you can like drag it you know so you can go over here and put this there all right and then you can use that to drag this image over there right and then it's gonna compress it to a half of its size all right and you can see it's it's and then you can download it again so after you've downloaded it again now if you go and you and you, and you open it inside of your uh, download folder and you put it inside of your desktop for example you will see that the image size is even is even smaller so once you've done that, the next thing you want to do before you actually download these images, um, um, for images, you have to consider search engine optimization. So when you're building a website like this, right? And this is something I should have done before, but, um, you know, you need to consider how you want your website to rank within Google searches. Okay. So what are the keywords you want to aim for on your website? And I'm not going to spend time going into a detailed keyword analysis because we don't have time for this. But if you have to, if I have to summarize this in a, in a, in, in a very simplistic manner so that you don't just ignore it and you just don't do it, you have to at least try, even if you don't do it well, later on, after you build your site, you can still go and hire somebody to help you do proper keyword research. But you have to at least think about what kind of keywords you want to work with, you know, because you are building content. What must the content attract? So what we want here is definitely an AI copywriter or an AI content generator. So if you think about if somebody goes and searches for AI content generator, you see AI content generator, 
I want people that I want people that are searching for this to find my website, which means I want my website to have a lot of these words or these keywords all over the all over the site, you know. So I will have to like be using it, you know, Mid Carabo Air Condition Generator. I must rewrite it all over the website so that you know the search engines associate my website with AI content generator. Or think about what do people search for? You know, blog writer, blog helper. Let me let me let's list this that blog writer blog writer ai there you go so maybe blog writer ai is better maybe maybe people blog writing assistant blog writing assistant there you go so you can think about the keywords and you can do proper research because this is not proper research you can do proper research and if you don't have the time to do proper research you can hire someone on fever to do this for you but the point of, of, of what you are trying to achieve is you're trying to get the best keywords that you can find that have little less competition and more search volume, right? So if you went to a tool like, um, you know, they call them like the Google, um, Google, what is it? Google, um, um, Google keyword assistant. All right. This is your friend when you're building a key, when you're working with keywords, you can look for Google keyword assistant, you Google keyword planner. There it is. All right. You go to Google Keyword Planner. Um, I'm not going to go through it now because this is this is another, this is a whole video tutorial. I have to create a whole video tutorial. And I've got a tutorial on this, by the way. So let me check my YouTube channel and I'll show you where you can go and find a more detailed uh, explanation around this. All right. So let's go to my, my channel. Let's go to my videos. Um, let me just try and show you which one, which video covers this in greater detail. So I covered this. When I, when I built this, um, you know, this, this jungle website, the, the first time, um, let me see, uh, project planning. Um, there you go. Google keyword planning. So this video over here where I did, um, lecture three of the jungle app development, I, I spent more time going into Google keyword planning. So go and watch that video and figure out how to do your keyword planning better. Cause I really can't cover everything in this video. Then there's another one I did earlier on. It's one of my earlier videos. I think I was doing e-commerce at the time and I did a whole video on how to optimize a whole e-commerce product page for, you know, um, for, for SEO. Um, so let me find it. Um, and that's a good video and you should have got a lot of views on it. Right. So, um, and if you just focus on the SEO, yes, there you go. WooCommerce, um, e-commerce SEO product description. So I, I spent a lot, the whole video just explaining how you would do SEO optimization in a wordpress website and if you can figure out how to do that and you can figure out then how to do this seo keyword planning over here you can figure out how to do it for this kind of website and you must always go through this exercise every website that you build so because i'm not going to cover this now let's assume you've done it and you would figure out what your keywords are okay so once you've done that um when you're going to use an image like this that you've resized okay um, you want to rename it to match your keywords. So let's say I decided my keywords is going to be a uh, blog writing, um, writing assistant. So let's say I've it's, it's not just blog writing assistant. It's AI blog writing assistant. Okay. This is what I've decided. You're going to have to have your own keyword. So this is the image I'm going to be working with. So I'm going to go and find my, um, files. And I'm going to find Carabo and then I'm going to find my static folder and then I'm going to find the landing static folder and then I'm going to go into the images. Okay. So it's landing, it's landing and then inside landing this IMG. All right. And then after IMG, it's this, um, I'm going to open that IMG in there. All right. And then I'm going to put this image in there. Okay. And then it's this image dot JPG. Okay. So once you've done that, you go back to your website and then let's see um, which image we are replacing. Um, where is our website? It's over here. So it's this image here. So right after I made Carabo, this is the image I think. So landing IMG, and then I'm gonna replace that image at the you know um, AI blog writing assistant.jpg. 
all right and always use the outer image okay don't leave it blank okay so you could use the same keyword for it okay so you could say ai blog um writing assistant what the out um image uh does for you is that um you know it helps the you know the the crawler to understand what this image is about and it also help your image rank in google image search searches so if somebody was searching for images and they were searching for a blog writing assistant image right they would f this image would rank there and they might find it there and it might lead you to your website so always use the alt text of an image okay so we've got the alt text we've renamed the image to to match our you know keywords and you want to do now the same thing for all your images all right so i'm going to like uh, save this and then I'm going to um, push this so we can see what it looks like. Coolio. All right, so let's refresh this page. All right, okay, so this looks really, really bad. All right, so this is not what I wanted. The image is completely out. So I don't know if um, image fluid takes center. So perhaps it's because of the image is what, what could be the problem? Hmm. Perhaps I need the image to be a bit square, all right? So maybe because it's rectangular and the image that was there before was a bit square, I'm not quite sure what the problem is, all right? Maybe the image is just too large. It doesn't quite fit, or maybe it's just the template. So that's that's sometimes what happens with templates if they're not well designed. Um, because this, this IMG fluid should literally be able to like put your image right in the middle, irrespective of the size. Because the other thing I would have to do here is to specify the height and i don't like to do that because um, um i don't like to you know to to change uh, the way an image looks so what i'm going to do um here let's 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 do something about this image let's open it up all right and let's make it a square image okay tools let's adjust size and um cancel let's just like crop it all right and um so that it's a bit more square Ugh. rectangular selection let's like crop it so it's a bit more square all right let's crop that um all right and then um i'm gonna say i'm gonna re re rename it okay so that's square now let me just rename it to a different name So let's restart our server here and have a look if this problem persists yeah yeah this is gonna be a a, a really a, a big problem so if this problem persists and you get an image that just doesn't quite look right for the space usually what it means is just that the template css is not well done because i what i hate to do is to now go into css design and start to and try and now re-edit and put you know uh, classes for you know 
for and like put stuff you know classes for heights and whatever restrictions because the template technically should just work all right and this image should be just in the middle the way it's supposed to be and you know and and the you know mobile whatever should friendly list should work okay so if you come across a problem like this it's most likely it's a template issue the template is just not well designed with css and you probably have to change it and use a different template but i'm not going to do that now because we are way too far uh gone on this okay so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to remove the background in this image okay i'm going to remove the background and make it more um you know make it look fit this uh, place better so make it a png all right i'm going to use my graphic design software and i'm going to do the same for all the spaces over here and i'm going to do the same for all the images i downloaded and then i'm going to rewrite this content with with the ai writer okay so i'm going to pause this video now go ahead and redesign this image removing the background and do the same for all the other images and um you don't have to know how to do this you could just use your illustration here and i think the illustration is not going to have the same problem okay so just do that and then i'm going to do this off camera and then i'm going to come back once i've redesigned this otherwise you could just pick a different template so this is what happens with free templates right yeah this is this is usually the problem when you get free templates they are free for a reason if you're gonna get free stuff they just don't work well um and i think this is just a template problem so um you could also just change this template and use a different one okay so let me pause this and then we'll continue after i've um, readjusted this you know off camera okay so i've managed to get the illustration to fit the space and the only way that I managed to do that was by using the SVG version. So it looks like this template is really like built for SVG because the original image in here was an SVG. So you shouldn't have a problem if you choose to use this Android illustrations because you can download them as SVG. So when you download them as SVG, you can then just replace the image that was in here with that one. Okay, you can keep the old image. It doesn't matter. Okay. But I don't like this. I personally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reuse a different template, but it shouldn't matter, you know, like for my final project, I'm going to use a different template, but I think I've already demonstrated to you how to get templates and how to then edit the template. So I've gone and I've also edited the content inside. So I've rewritten this with the AI writer to make it look nicer right and i've done the same for the pricing and i've rewritten this section as well the blogs i'll do right at the end so i'm going to just leave this as it is and then right at the end we will rewrite the blogs and then at the bottom here just edit this to fit your company details okay and then our landing page is done okay so what we're going to do next is we're going to do the login and the registration pages so i think we still have yeah so that will be the next part of the tutorial i'm going to do that but i still don't like this template so uh, offline i'm gonna replace it anyway with a different one maybe i'll go for a page template you know but it's up to you now you can see what the problem with this this free template is you get into this kind of things and it's really just the template and you can't fix it you need a different one so i'm going to um um start working on the login and registration pages okay so i'm gonna go back to uh the templates that we downloaded all right so i've looked through all these templates and the one that i've decided to go with is this one that's called sneet okay so let's just like go in there and um look at can we open the index.html let's open the index.html um that's not what we want let's go into the HTMLs, okay and let's look for index in here all right so this is better so this is the template that we're going to go for for the admin side and it's got the login and the the authorization pages the login and the sort of the registration pages so if you go into um i think authentications and you go into login and registration you can see this is the login page that we're going to use and then if you go into register you can see this is the register page that we're going to use and i like this i mean and this what i liked about this as well was that you could see the colors are going to fit nicely with what we already have over there you see so it looked quite similar and I thought it would work well together, but I'm just disappointed with this template right now with the way the images look weird. I like the way the images look, the image looks here, but I don't like that. So I'm probably going to redo my landing page anyway and use a different template and I'll keep the colors as much as possible, but I can do that offline. And then tomorrow, next week I would have done that. Okay. So this is the registration in the login pages that we're going to be using. Okay. So you can see over here, um you can see the location of this template all right you can go like and you can see where it is um 
anyway we know where it is because we have it open um over there as well we've got it open over here so all you need is to find um okay i wanted to see what it was called okay that's why i was doing this so i wanted to see what is this template called it's auth register basic dot html so let's have a look there auth register basic there you go and then you've got auth um login basic so i think it's these two templates all right let's just double check auth login and auth register all right those are the ones okay so these are the two templates we're gonna work with so i'm gonna uh we're gonna do exactly what we did the last time um i'm going to go into my my, my templates over here under lay under landing all right so we're gonna create a new do we want to create a new app yeah, we're gonna create a new app and we're gonna call this app um new new well, what do we call it let's call it let's say like new oh, come on um inside of the templates let's say um uh, goodness what am i trying to do here i'm trying to say create a new folder where is it all right let's just do this new folder like that okay and then i'm gonna call this new folder um, um authorization but let's not call it auth because that name is sort of already used let's call it let's just put the whole authorization in there all right and then we're going to create a new app called authorization we're going to put all the authorization views and everything in there all right and then i'm going to create actually i'm going to duplicate this so we're going to duplicate this authorization copy and then we're going to put the same folder inside of our templates. So we're going to have a templates for authorization and then we're going to have the authorization app. All right. So uh, templates for authorization. So these new, these two new templates, um, we're going to put them in here. This login basic and register basic. So just copy them because we don't want to like, you know, move them and then uh, move them from the old template so that they're always there and you want to paste them in here and then i'm going to rename this html i'm just going to call it login so that it's simple and then i'm going to rename this one and i'm going to call it register all right so i'm going to call that register and i'm going to call the other one login and then um what i'm going to do is i'm going to then um try and find my um actually let's let's see what's happening here with the templates now that we've got this open we can actually go into authorization over here and let's close all of these here we're done with this for now <clears throat> let's look at our login i just want to see how it's referring to the assets um our css and our html okay because i need to be able to refer to 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 it okay so it's there's a folder called assets and then inside you get all of those other things vendor css okay and then at the bottom here it's also the assets vendor okay so i need to find a folder called assets um and i think that is this folder over here all right so this of uh, assets folder as uh, this is the folder that we need all right so i'm going to go and uh put this folder inside of my static all right so there's landing um and then i'm gonna just like copy it as it is all right i'm gonna copy this assets folder and i'm gonna paste it in here and then i'm going to recall rename it um authorization okay authorization all right um let's see just just let's just like yeah let copy that authorization in there because i just want to make sure that i can um all right perfect so then what we're going to do now we're going to redo this template to the jungle style remember what we did the last time so um but basically um everywhere it says um so basically everywhere it says dot assets like that okay because we've renamed this folder to authorization we're going to replace that with authorization okay so everyone it says everywhere it says that we're going to replace with authorization okay and replace all all right and then we're going to look for this authorization again and then we're going to sort of like rewrite this in um um in um you know in the jungle in the jungle way so i hope this works here 
um, so we do um, URL for static and then we paste authorization in there all right and then we do the same thing here we'd say um, URL for static URL for static and we paste that in there and you do the exact same thing here And of course, for us to use this, we need to load static at the top. All right, so we need to dish dish, say load uh, static. All right, and then where were we? So we've done that there. So we need to just basically do this for all of them. So this is a bit of a manual, a manual task. Okay. So once you're done with replacing all of the, um, you know, finding a way to sort of find the static folder, because we're rewriting this template for static, okay? So we have created a new folder inside of our static folder that is called, so if you go to static there, we've created that folder called authorization, and we've sort of hoid everything in there, so we can refer to it that way inside of our template, okay? So that's what we're going to do now. And then once we've done that, what I want to now look at is, what this template, you know, so what it looks like there's a lot of um, SVG reference here. Hey, this app brand um, is just done differently. This login page, um, let's see, um, it looks like, yeah, it's an SVG. So they've sort of used an SVG for for the brand. And so to the, this whole thing, this whole like sort of arrow there is, is done via SVG over here. And I don't know if, if I really need that. So let me like go and delete this whole SVG because it's just taking up a lot of space. All right. So let's leave that blank. And then let's leave this, Um, you know, I don't know. Let's call this Garabo or whatever, you know. Yeah. Let's call that Garabo. And then so what I wanted to see is please sign into your account to start the adventure. Okay. So where is that? Please sign into your account to start the adventure. So this is pretty much the you know way the, the you know the, the the registration and the and the signing in and the whatever starts okay so after the logo over here welcome to sneet over there so from there up to the form all right and up to the bottom of the form where it says new on the platform create an account so all the way up to here let me see this div where does this div start okay now it starts outside so up to this paragraph over here this is the only part that is specific to the login page. Everything else looks the same. So what we can actually do, we can do our layout arrangement and we can create the same layout and then we can put the registration somewhere else. Okay, let me see this upgrade to pro button. Let me delete that upgrade to pro. Yeah, I don't like this. Uh, we're not going to be upgrading to pro. Yeah, so we've removed that. So this whole section here is pretty much the everything that's got to do with the login page. So what we can do actually is that we can create like a layout page specific for the uh, login and registration. Okay, so let's see how that would look like. That would look like um, all of this. So I could basically um, load static and I could like copy all of this and put it inside. I've created inside of the layout folder a new file called auth.html. So I could paste that in there, right? And then I could take out just this section that's got to do with the login um, in the middle over there. And then I could call this block body like we did the last time with the other one. So we could call this block body and say end block. Okay. All right, and then we would put this, um, um, you know, uh, then we would put that block body in here. All right, um, block body, and we would say end block, and then we would paste that in here, you see. And then obviously, we have to say, um, extends, so we have to like say this one extends, it extends, um, it's inside of the layout folder. And then it's a file called auth.html, right? So it extends auth.html instead of the layout folder. And then that's auth.html, okay? So you see that that works, that looks much better. And then we would only have to sort of worry about, um, you know, 
would have to only worry about the author i mean the the thingy like once you know like we'd only have to you know sort out the logo and everything once and then for the login we only focus on the login form which is this login form you can see this is the forgot password and and this is like you know the login form you know um so forgot password is that link over there if somebody forgot the password then it can take them to the forgot password page and then um the registration if you look at now the register we can also just focus on um so we don't have to then redo all of this again right so we only have to focus on let's see where this one started um this h h4 welcome to snit so if we look at the register page um adventure starts here so let's search for that under um a register uh, adventure all right let's find that so this h4 over there this is also where it starts you see so it starts on this h4 and it goes all the way to um um you know the end of the paragraph over here sign in instead all right which is where we ended it the last time as well with that last paragraph okay so we only really only need this section all right so we really only need this section so we can just like sort of cut this out all right and then you can like remove everything else and then the rest of the form will look exactly the same and then we'll just have like this block body all right so we'd have like block body over here and then and block all right and block and then we can paste that registration over there and then obviously we have to do the same thing here extend that and then we need to also load static by the way um even though it's loaded on the other one we still need to load um static uh i don't know if we need static here but i load it anyway so i don't forget to do it okay so we can just basically paste that in there and extend layout and then we load static all right then over here you have now your registration page which is register and then you have the login page which is login all right so um I haven't even created the jungle forms. We'll do the jungle form and the form and everything else properly. But let's just make sure as a start that this page is displayed properly inside of our application, that we can actually navigate to the register page and we can navigate to the login page and that at least they look the way they should look. Okay, So they should look pretty much like this here and there. All right. So I'm going to... What I'm going to do is I'm going to remember we created a new folder called authorization and currently this folder is empty. All right. So basically we're creating a new app. So there are two ways to create an app. You can create an app with a Django, you know, assistant, you know, the Django admin and create a new app. Or you can like literally do it manually because all it does is create the app folders and, you know, and all of that. So you can actually like, you know, look at an existing app like this one over here. All right, and I can see this folder there and I'm going to just create everything that's in here in the other one. Okay, but first of all, let me save this, save these. These are the HTML stuff. So let me close that and I'm just going to, you know, recreate the same arrangement here. Okay, so I need an init.py file. So let me just like, um, I'm not duplicating. I actually just want to copy that. And then I'm on a inside of authorization. We're gonna create. We need to create this 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 file. Even though it's empty, this is the one that tells um you know uh, Python that this is a you know a package. And then um we need the admin. All right. There's nothing in here, but we're gonna just do the same thing. Admin.py. Okay. Admin.py. So this is creating an app manually. All right. Then we need apps.py. All right. So um let's create a new file called apps dot py and obviously you want to paste that in here and you're going to need to change some things okay Django apps app config this is landing config so we're going to call this authorization okay authorization and then we're going to call this authorization okay so it must match what you call the folder authorization and then you can then you must then make sure that you've registered this app inside of your settings with py so we need to go into um where is it where is our settings with py uh close templates okay let's open it in there settings with py just make sure that we um add this app in here okay installed apps all right, so we're just going to add the new one authorization in there. All right, and then we can um, save this and close that. So then that's good. So we've done um, 
the apps.py. Then the next one is the models.py. There's nothing inside of the models.py, but we still need to just create that file, a new file called models. Ugh. Models.py and then paste that in there. All right. And then tests.py, there's nothing in there, but let's just also do the same thing and create the new file that is called a tests.py. All right. And then what else is the urls.py? Um, let's see what's in here. Let's just copy it as it is and do the same thing. A new file urls.py and inside of the urls.py we're going to create two new urls the, the login and the registration for now okay we'll add more like forgot password da, 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 all those other things later but for now we're going to have um login all right and then registration register all right and then this will just call it login all right and this will this will just call register We'll have two parts in there and this one will be login and the other one will be register okay okay and then once we've done this we need to register this inside of the main urls or py file so that the main so that django knows that there is another urls or py file inside of the authorization class so we need to go back into um Garabo here and go into the URLs and then we need to register a new like we had landings.urls in here to extend to include this inside of the main URLs file. We need to include also the authorization URLs so that it knows that um there are there's an existing there's another URLs file in there, all right? And we could just call it, we could just say maybe maybe auth to be simple, which means that all of the URLs that are inside of the authorization dot uh, url folder the urls.py file inside of the authorization app will start with the auth sort of prefix they will start with auth and then whatever it is we call it so to navigate to the login page we will start with auth and then we will go login and then we'll be auth slash login auth slash register so all the apps will start with that and then we can just um refer to the right um authorization.urls that's all we have to do in there and then we can save that and then we can close that in there and then let's see what else what other file do we need in here we've done the urls and then the views all right so i'm going to copy this as well and then we're going to just go in there and we're going to create a new file that we will call views.py and then we will paste that in there all right so now we've got all the files in here and then for views.py, of course, remember we've got the login view and we've got the register view, which we, this is what we registered inside of our urls.py. So this is this views.login and views.register. Remember, we import views at the top from dot import views. So from the same folder, import a file called views. And then inside of the file called views, you need to access dot login. Um, function and then dot register function. So inside of the files view, we need to create the login uh, function and the register function. Okay. And the login function is going to render a, an HTML file that is not inside of the landing folder, but is going to be inside of the templates um, uh, authorization folder. Remember, um, we need to refer it to where the HTML template is and the HTML template is inside of this authorization folder and um it's authorization login and authorization register okay so i need to replace this to say authorization okay and for the login one it needs to uh, display the authorization login and then for the other one um authorization it needs to display the authorization register page okay so technically now if i go to this url root that is going to be auth.login I should be able to, um, you know, invoke this function and then it should um, render this template that is called, that is inside authorization login template, which is the template we just created now. And then this template should uh, display properly based on the layout that we've built. So we can just like test and check that this works fine. All right. But we will sort out all the other things later. All right. So let's just at least save this and make sure that at least our templates display um, without an issue. All right. Okay, so we've added a lot of, uh, you know, um, 
we've added a lot of um static folders that's why you see all of this um you know static authorization everything that we added in there that's why it's taking a bit of time so it has to push all of that add all of that into git and um let's then run our um and there's no errors which means at least there's no like you know glaring errors in here and i'm gonna before i close this um just restart this so nothing should have changed over here you should see you should still only be seeing the landing page when you wanna uh, you know go to the landing page but what we want to be able to check is that if you now navigate to auth a uh, login all right you will uh find the login page okay so um auth login um is not found um so what could be the problem here so this is the url for login let me just double check this this is the url for login and it is called login and um and if inside of the urls.py file um where is it yeah just 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 the main urls.py file so let's debug here a little bit inside of here we did include this um authorization.urls okay and technically it should find that url so maybe i'm probably typing it wrong or something so let me try something now so let's go into our templates and um and um look at <clears throat> Let's go into our templates and in the index, all right? And then let me just like go back and go into this register button, okay? So this register button, let's just, um, where is it? It will be inside of the layer of the landing, isn't it? The register button, which is this one. So let's try and navigate from the button and, and try and see if maybe we did, we did something wrong with the URLs. So let's try and just do a URL for register because that should be the, okay, we should have a URL for register. Okay, let's try that one. let's refresh that and then if you like hover on the button aha uh -huh, auth register i see okay so what i'm missing here is um um is um i need to have um a slash before okay yeah i need to have a slash otherwise it's just putting in one word like that Okay, so auth login and auth register. Yeah, let's do it like that. All right. It's just sort of like appending, appending to it as opposed instead of, um, so let's refresh that. And if you now click, um, if you now hover over there, you can see it says auth register. So technically, if you did that auth um, login like that, it should take me to the login page. There you go. So this is the login page now. And then um, if I wanted to see the register page. Awesome. So you can see the register is different from the login and we have, um, you know, um, yeah, we've, we're using the same layout and everything, but I see I've got a warning over there and, and I just wanted to read what warning, what, what is this warning? Um, okay. So this has a root beginning with this, so they don't, it doesn't like this. So Django doesn't like this. So maybe what I could do is remove it from here perhaps and put it inside of where is this inside of the settings.py? Where is it? The Carabo um, URLs.py and put it there like that. Yeah, I think this is how I need to do it. Okay. 
all right it will it will it will have the same effect okay so now we've got our we now know that our login and our registration pages work okay so we need to now create the Django roots and classes and models for login and for registration okay so um Django has got a built-in user model so we don't have to recreate the model and i'm not going to be modifying the model either i'm just going to use it as it is and i'm going to completely simplify the registration and the login process okay so we're going to go into authorization so let's just close in all the other folders there and we're going to go into forms and we're going to kick in straight from the forms but let me have a look again at this in my template because maybe i might, might want to do this manually because sometimes you know the templates look so nice that you don't want to use a jungle form or even a um um a you know a um you know what you call it crispy form because then it just messes up the way the login and registration page looks and this is the only page in the jungle form that i will do manually the manual form submission route and not the the jungle submission way but let me have a look first of all let me just have a quick a quick look at my login page and just see what's there all right okay so you've got an input for password okay um, so this is the input, all right? So you got the, okay, let's see. Let's go to the login, auth login. No, like, actually, let's just start with the register one. So let's 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 leave the login and let's go to the register. We'll do the registration first, okay? Okay, so you've got a label for email, username. So where does it say username? Let's find that, okay, username. So you enter your username, you enter your email, and then you enter your password. Okay, this confuses a lot of people, and I'm not going to even ask for that. I'm just going to ask for an email and a password. Okay, so I'm not going to have a username. So here where it says username there, um, so this is the form group. All right. Um, dish, dish, dish. Actually, let me do this so I can read this better. Okay, because this, this is a mission to read like that. Can barely read this. I want to see the classes and I want to see all of these other things, autofocus. All right, let me see that. All right, so you've got the form, it's a form control class, it doesn't have any fancy classes in there. And then you've got margin bottom three inside of the um, uh, what you call the you know, the form group. So this is a form group over here. All right, that's a form group, and then that's a form group. All right. And then you've got password toggle. This is a different class. So this form group has got a different class. So maybe I might want to do this manually after all. Okay. And then um, let me just make some space over here and see what this form looks like. Okay. It's not always good practice to do forms manually, but sometimes it's a sacrifice you have to make for, you know, being able to stick to, to keep your design the way you want it okay so um so let's see so you definitely have a username email and password entry so you get a username email and password all right and then you've got a um you know i agree to the privacy policy and terms which is going to be like a tick box which must be required so we need to sort of have this input uh, I agree to this. This is an input and terms and we're going to definitely have to add in here that this is required, which means that somebody has to fill this in uh, before they, um, you know, like they have to agree before they can continue. Otherwise, we don't allow them to continue. Um, they have to accept the terms and conditions and the label is underneath. All right. Perfect. And then you've got the button that says button primary sign up and then this button is going to have to be a type submit all right and then we just have to make sure that all of this is inside of a form okay and then i don't need an id because i'm doing this differently um and i definitely don't have an action i'm just going to put the action as blank like that and then it's going to be a post all right and then um yeah okay so i think we'll do this form manually we'll do this manually all right so let's 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 get started with doing this form manually. Right, okay. So <coughs> where do we get started? I um you have to import, like I said, um Django has a built-in user model already. So we're not gonna we don't need to create a new model and we're not gonna modify the existing model. The only thing that we're gonna do is we're only gonna ask for like an email address and a password. 
Okay, so we're not going to ask for like a username because that confuses a lot of people. So over here in the registration page where it's asking for a username there, I'm just going to delete that. And I'm going to just ask for like an email and a password. Okay, and then um, once they submit and then I've got this type submit and they click this button and this form is okay. This should now come into the views under register and then i can double check what's going on here okay so i'm going to say if a request because this is the request object that comes in there i'm going to say if request dot method is equals to post which means if somebody submits a form all right there's a couple of things i want to do all right so if the request dot method is equals to post i'm gonna try and say um, um let's get the username that was submitted all right is that what we called it here um i think we called it email and the name is email okay so there's email the name is email here and the name is password here all right so um let's um say username is equals to um request dot post okay and instead of request dot post we're gonna try and get the username and then um let's say the password is equals to request dot post and then we're going to try and get the password okay whatever password was submitted over here if somebody submits the form all right and then we're going to print let's just print to see what comes up all right so let's say username submitted was um username all right um username and that's okay that, that at least lets me know the form works and it submits to the back end. And then what we're going to do is that we are going to um, return. We have to return something over here. Or if we just leave it, it will um, render the same uh, page again anyway. Right? So it will, it will render the same page anyway. Or otherwise, we can still do that. We can say return. Um... We can um, redirect. So this render, we can also import redirect, I think. And then we can um, redirect um, redirect back to the same um, you know, URL. So this URL for register. So let's just render the same page again. Okay, so if, um, and then it will now redirect and get into the page as a get request, not a post. So let's, 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 let's save this and try and see if we can at least print the username that was submitted, that we can get the username out um, and make sure that this is how we would be able to get the username and the password out. All right. So. Okay. All right, let's make some space over here and run a run server. And so I'm going to close all of these ones because I don't need them anymore. I've pretty much gotten my template out. I don't need my illustrations. I've downloaded the illustrations I want. So, um, so this is the login and I, I need to probably get rid of this, <laughs> this, um, fave icon over here because it's only on this page. So let's see. I think it's going to be on the layout for auth. Um, uh, this icon over here. Um, let's just like, we'll, we'll put in our own. Okay. So let's get rid of this one for now. All right. Let's get rid of this one. I don't like that one. We'll put in our own icon. Okay. So then, um, so this is the, the, the auth. This is the auth or register page. Shouldn't this be the register page? Okay, so we've changed some things on the page. That's why you only see the email and password because we've removed that. So let's enter an email. Let's just say admin at uh, scolo dot online. All right, and remember we've also made this to be required. So we must also we can also check that that will be whatever. So let's put in any password, right, and not click that and try to submit. It will remind you that this is, you must click here. You must accept because we made it required. So it must be added before the form can be submitted. Let's submit the form. Um, CRF verification failed. Oh yes, we need to add a CSRF token on the form. All right. So over here inside, just inside of the form, 
um where does the form start yeah right at the top of the form all right um so let's do this again all right let's agree let's sign up okay so it submitted properly it re-rendered the page which means there was no errors and then if you look back you should be able to see username submitted was admin at gmail.com all right so which means we are now able to get everything submitted properly okay so we're able to get the email and the password so what i wanted to do is you know when somebody's registering generally you want to submit the password twice so that you can compare the passwords the two passwords to make sure that they've entered the password correctly so what we will do here for password over here this password toggle i'm going to replicate this all right I'm going to replicate this and then I'm going to um, call this. Um, so instead of password, I'm going to say um, a password again the second time around. And then um, this ID password, um, the second one, I'm going to call it password uh, two. And this I'm going to call it password one. And then the name password as well. I'm going to call this one password one. And then I'm going to call this other one password two so that I can differentiate between the two passwords. And then so this will be password and password again all right and then um the person can enter the password twice so the first thing that we're going to the first check we need to do because we're doing this manually we're going to have to do the checks manually the first check that we're going to have to do is to check that the passwords match all right and if the passwords don't match we're going to you know sort of like you know display an error okay so we need to actually also have a way to display an error over here and then we can actually use um let's look at our template again where's our template um just just did i close this template um let's open up this um just um let's open up this this template html doesn't matter which page we open um i just wanted to why did i open the blank one okay um all right doesn't matter which page you open let us look for i'm looking for like um you know like a um, you know like a like a message you know like um you know uh you know like a, a, something we could use to display a message if somebody entered like the wrong password or something so let's go into um um not form elements but um user interface alert okay i'm looking for an alert okay so something like a like this kind of like a danger alert okay so let's see i want this danger alert so let's look at the source and then let's just like you know this is a danger alert let's look for it inside of the source find and this is the alert danger all right so we're gonna put this alert here we're going to copy this alert as it is and we are going to paste it inside of um let's see right at the top let me move this closer so if we put it like right at where would you want to display this right after make your app management easy and fun so here after app make management app management easy and fun or you could even put it there which then means you could put it inside of the layout you understand so you could actually like i'm um, going to the layout and put it before the the h4 so let's go to the auth layout and just before block body over here you could put it there which means this um this this alert will display um right um over there but then there's a couple of things we need to do we need to use the jungle messaging function and so let's 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 get the code for that okay so this is pretty much what it needs to look like all right so you only just this is you display this under condition that um something has happened you know so i've pasted this in here and you can see it's alert alert danger so it pretty much looks the same as what it needs to you know like what we have already so we've rewritten this in um inside of a condition if messages is available like if there is a message to display all right and we're using the built-in django messaging you know functionality if there's a message to display you'll display the message and the alert you know you have alert danger alert success alert info alert whatever and it will display whatever the alert um of the message tag and if you remember inside of our settings.py file 
um what we did is that we already created this message tags um i mean we sort of like mapped the message tags already so that if you get like a message that is a success message it will give that success you know string which then will be that uh, 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 success or whatever it will go into the alert alert success you know alert to error it will give the alert danger info it will be info and so forth and so forth okay so provided you have this in your in your settings with p1 you can then do you know do it like that and then i'm going to remove this so a message should display uh, based on the message tag that you give it um, if there's a message to display. So you put this, I put this inside of the layout, which means it will be available inside of the log login and inside of the registration form. All right. Then back inside of the view function, what you need to do is that you need to import messages at the top. This should be similar to what you have in the settings.py file there. So you can copy the same import there and you import the same thing inside of the views and then you can use the messages in here all right so now we have password one okay and password one and then we'll have password two all right because we created it in that way that we have password one and password two all right and then back inside of the html form we need to make sure that password one and password two are both required, okay? So right at the bottom there, I'm gonna just make sure I add required, all right? And over here as well, um, required. And I don't think I need this. Um, so I'm gonna delete that. Okay, I'm gonna leave the placeholder. So these are both required, you know, and then this is password two, password one. And then what we wanna do over here, inside of the view function all right we're gonna say um if password one okay is equals to password two password two okay so we so we want to check if password one and password two are equal so if the person has entered passwords that are exactly the same but we actually want to check if it's not equal so that we can so if not so if they are not equal, so you can tell them that your passwords do not match, okay? So if this is not equal, then we can display that message I was telling you about, all right? So what we need to do to, to display that, we need to use that messages that we imported at the top over here, all right? So we need to say uh, messages um, dot, we need to display an error message in this specific case, okay? So we're going to say messages dot error, and this one takes in um, the request, all right? And then the message that you want to display, okay? So you can say passwords do not match all right and then you can redirect um the person over there um to you know back to the register page and tell them that your password one and your password two do not match okay and the email address is going to be that email what i like to do all the time is i know probably Django, Django doesn't do this automatically that's why i like sometimes to do my registration page manually because i want to be able to override this and make sure that this happens the way i want it is when somebody enters the email, I always like to um, replace. Um, if somebody has entered like an empty space in the email, okay, I want to remove the empty space. So if you say replace any spaces with a blank, it means that if somebody has entered a, a um, an empty space, it will be removed. And then you also want to lower, okay, which means that if somebody comes in and enter an, enters an email address like this, like M R E T T whatever at gmail.com, right? It's going to be stored like this in the database. And what, what I've found from experience is that people, I don't know why they would do this, but people will register with this email address. And then when they log in, they will do this, you know? And then it will not match. Like it will not, like, you know, when, when Django compares these two email addresses, this email address, right? So this email address and that email address, if you had used an uppercase and, a, you know, like that, they won't match, you know? And for some reason, when you do the normal registration, for, you know, whatever, under the username and somebody has entered this, you're going to have a problem. And then the person is like, oh, I can't log into my account. So what I normally do is, you know, from the beginning, when I store it in the database, I make sure that I lower everything, okay? I lower everything into the database and store it as a lowercase. Because if this is your email address with uppercase, I know if I send you an email, even if I lowercase it, the email will go through, technically. But in the database, when you compare email addresses like that, it will not, it will, it will not find that user, okay? So the first thing that you want to check is, that um, we want to make sure that we lower everything 
All right. And then the next thing that we want to check as well, before we create a new user account, we want to make sure that that user account does not already exist in the database. Okay. So the next check that we want to do is that the user does not already exist. Otherwise it will throw an error anyway, and we're going to catch that error before it's thrown. Okay. So we're going to check if, so we're going to use that user, that user class at the top. Okay. User dot objects, right? A dot filter. We're going to filter a, a user with the um, username that's equals to this email address that was entered. In fact, you can just use email. doesn't matter because we're going to use both the email and the username. So we're going to check inside of our database if we have a user with this email address. All right. Um, this email address, if that user already exists. So you're going to do all of this and you're going to say exists. All right. So if this user exists, you want to again tell them that, you know, hey, this user already exists. Please use a different email address. OK, so you're going to say a user with the email address um, already exists. Please use a different one, a different email. Okay, and then we're just going to format the email, right? So we're going to tell them, okay, a user with that email address already exists. Please use a different user, ad, you know. So these are the kind of checks you want to look for when somebody's registering. We check that the passwords match. We check that that user does not already exist. And then if we are happy that the user does not, the user doesn't exist and the passwords match because the, the, the user would have been returned here and would have been returned there, if we are happy with that, we can then create a new user profile and log in that user. Okay. So how we're going to do that is we're going to say, um, so if we've passed all of these and that we're happy, um, you know, then we can create the user. We can say user dot objects. All right. And we don't use create. Okay. We use create user because if you were creating, if you're adding any other object in the database, you could just say create, but for the user, we have to use a create user function that it stores the database in a hash. I mean the password in a hashed format, then you can create a new user. And then what I'm going to do here, I'm going to say the email address is equal to the email address. And I'm going to say the username is equal to the email address. So I'm going to use the same username for the email and the, you know, you know, the same email, I mean, the same username, I mean, the same email address for the username and the email. And then I'm going to say the password is equals to password one. I don't know, password one or password two. It doesn't matter because at this stage we would have checked that they are the same. Okay. So I'm going to say a new user is equals to this. All right. We're going to create this new user and then we're going to say, we're going to save this new user which I don't think is necessary, but um, let's save it anyway. It's just a habit. And then after we've created this new user, then we're going to log them in. Okay. So we're going to say auth.login. All right. We're going to say auth.login. We're going to log in the request. It takes in a request and the user that you want to log in. All right. And then after this, we can then redirect to a different page. So we can just say um, return, redirect. Let's redirect to the home page, right? But then how do we know that you're logged in? Okay, because technically at this stage, we would want to redirect to your dashboard or whatever, you know? And remember, I think in our settings, we do have that option. I think we've, I don't know if we, we still have it. Let me just double check it. In our settings that we have the login URL. I mean, the redirect, yeah, you see the login redirect. So when someone logs in, it's going to try and redirect them in there. Okay, it only redirects them in there if you put in like a decorator in the in, in a function that does this. But let me um, just like disable this for now. And uh, because I don't have the dashboard route done and, and I want to play around with the decorators anyway. So, um, so now we're going to re redirect this person to the home page. But when they go to the home page, I mean, they won't see anything. You won't see anything. How do you know that you're logged in? So what I'm going to do is that inside of my home page, I'm just going to create something that shows you that you're logged in. Okay. So I'm going to go and, um, so let's see where's our landing layout and then this register button. Okay. So this register button, 
this is the this is the kind of button that on the home page if somebody is not logged in you want to show this button and then when they are logged in you want to show maybe the dashboard so they can go to the dashboard and they can you know they can whatever start working so i'm going to use um a conditional display over here and say um if the user is logged in so a conditional display that checks if the user is currently logged in and you can do that very easily in django by using the user is authenticated sort of check okay and the user is a is a universal variable that is always available on all the templates you don't have to specifically send it into the context it's always there so you can just access it as user the current user that's currently right now in the thing so you can check if user is authenticated okay so you can ugh, what is that if user is is um authen like that so this will prove true if the user is logged in right so if the user is logged in you actually don't want to display the register page you want to display them you want to be able to you know have them navigate to the to the dashboard all right so you want them to be able to navigate to the dashboard you know to the dashboard um whatever if they are not logged in all right if they are not logged in, then you can display the button that says login or whatever. All right. And then you can do end if in there. So this is conditional displays. It will display this button or that button based on the condition that you're giving it. So you can end if in here. So if this condition is satisfied and the user is authenticated, it will display the, bash, the, the dashboard. And you can even change colors maybe like have button primary have button info there you know a different button you know it's up to you and then if the user is authenticated they only see the dashboard if they're not authenticated they see the register button okay so this will be a nice way for us to also check between ourselves that the login actually worked right and we'll also check in the database to make sure that that user was created anyway all right so if we go to um the views right so we've done all of this let's hope there's no like major glaring errors let's test this out we're gonna first of all test if it's really comparing the passwords properly then we're gonna test if you know um yes to commit the password if the user already exists we can't test that because there's no user that exists right now and then we're gonna test for um you know the new user we're gonna check that okay so let's save all here Where is my All right, let's push this first. All right, so let's then run this. Okay, so let's go back to the register page. So now we've got password and password again. Okay, so enter password and password again. So you can see that the person needs to enter the password twice. Okay, so let's enter uh, a proper email. Let me use my Gmail. Um, dot com, and then let's enter a password any password and then we're going to enter another one which doesn't match that password okay and then agree to the terms and let's see what happens there you go our passwords do not match it takes you to the same page but it displays that message passwords don't match and the nice thing about messages is that they only display once okay so if i refresh this page the message is gonna go it just makes sure that you've seen it once and it displays that message and um so the passwords don't match check works fine all right, so we can actually try and create a user right now and see what would happen there. All right, so let's use the same email address. Okay, um, let's uh, try and create a user there, like um, password. Okay, let's use the same password agree to the terms sign up name user is not defined aha uh -huh. all right so um let's see the user there um dash dash so where is it not defined um under auth login 
all right so i'm already here under auth login okay so because i called this new user all right and then i'm then i'll call this user that's okay but that means that actually the user should be created all right so the user so by the time you get here and you've reached this error the user should be created and if we check our database we should actually see this new this user in the database so let's find a way to check our database we're going to stop this and um we're gonna try and log in as a um as a super user to check um the admin panel okay i'm logged in um let's just have a look what's going on here let's look under the users um i think i've got like two super users because i had a super user so this one was the first one i created so let's delete this one the second one something is not right with this one so let's delete this one um yes i'm sure and then i'm gonna be left with that one so this is the one i just created now this mercedes at gmail.com is a user i just created now so you see that the user creation process worked fine i'm gonna delete this user anyway i'm gonna delete this user and i'm gonna say go all right and then yes i'm sure i want to delete this user and then i'm going to be left with just this one um admin super user then i'm going to log out of here and then we're going to go back to um auth register all right and let's just double check first of all before we go to auth register if we check the home page um okay so i need to put in here if all right if uh, okay so let's 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 run this again okay so let's refresh this again okay so now the button should say register, okay? Then I'm gonna click on the register page and I'm back here. So I'm gonna re-register that user again, that Mercedes at Gmail, which I just deleted. All right, let's put in a password there. All right, let's agree and let's sign up. And now it's taking us back to the home page but now we see the dashboard button not the register page okay so we are technically logged in right now all right and if we went into um our admin our admin page all right if we went into our um our admin page like that you will see okay i can't because i'm not an, a staff i'm not like super user i can't log in with that whatever i just created so i have to log in again with my super user okay which is admin.scholar.online all right and then um you can see that um if you go to the users you can see there is the new user that we just created now okay so technically our login our registration process works but of course when someone logs in you want to actually like now take them to the page the admin where they can start maybe work on their profile page and they can like at least um you know so let's have like an admin page that we build where users can go to and um you know they can like you know edit their profile information and all sorts of other things and i think i'm going to end this video here because it's getting a bit long now so we'll continue next week guys so what we've done this week if we go back to our list what we've done this we definitely built the content for our page took a bit of time but that's important to get the content right we got illustrations for the project and we did the authentication flow it's not complete but but we are halfway there, all right? So what we're going to do next week is that once a user logs in, we need to route them into the dashboard. So we're going to create a dashboard page and maybe a profile page, a user profile page where they can edit their username, their name, first name, surname, email address, whatever, settings, you know? So we're going to have a settings page that looks like this. So if you look at our template there, if we look at our template there, um, we're going to have like a, um, a, an account settings. No, let's see. Um, 
um yeah account settings so we're going to create a profile page like this you know so people can like enter their profile information and this will be like their dashboard okay so when someone logs in it's going to take them to this page so then after then on this page they can like edit their information then after that we're going to sort of have all the different use cases on the menu like this so we'll have use case number one blog writing use case number two content generation whatever the use cases is we're going to have them like on the menu like this and when they click on it it takes them to that use case and then they can start doing whatever it is they start doing okay um and so forth and maybe we'll have um something here like payments you know so um, so so and so, so they can see already that they are on the free account and then if they want to like upgrade to whatever you know we can do payment processing but i won't cover payment processing um on the free youtube video i'm gonna add that to the videos that i'm gonna uh, have on my website that you have to pay for to understand how payment processing work but at least i'll show you how to then um you know if someone was on the free whatever and they registered on the free trial and we're going to be able to track as they use so we we'll already start working on the use cases and then as they and then we're going to be measuring how many words they are using and when they reach that three thousand limit of words then we're going to say oops you know you've reached the limit for you to continue you have to upgrade your account and then i'll show you how to do the upgrade with the payment processing but obviously later on you know so there's a lot to do now but we're almost there now hey i think um now that we are here and we've got the login and the whatever page you know we'll be able to continue with it but we'll then do that um you know the rest of it um next week so thank you guys for watching see you again next week